We're gonna send the dog onto Kronos. Kronos used his ability. We're gonna get some basics off while he's basic attacking the dog. He was able to full clear the wave. I'm gonna have to back it up because he still has some minions. Your middle tower is under attack. We're gonna throw the ice down, get him to move up, throw the dog on him, throw the slow, get the increased movement speed from the ice, get some basics off. We do have our ultimate. We use our ultimate. Kronos is, uses his ultimate. We're gonna have to run away. He has a lot of health. We're able to dodge that ability. He's still coming. We now we know he's on cooldown. He's slid across our ice. Now he's in a bad spot. We have our dog on him. We're gonna hit him with the line attack. We're gonna hit him with a basic. Oh boy. Can we get him? Hit him with a basic attack and we get the pick. So now we're gonna peel back. What a do, Skibbity Boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Scotty Carey. If you are new to the channel, I upload 6 to 7 times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played, with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I absolutely love Scotty. She was the first new god to come out when I started playing, all the way back in Season 3. She's pretty strong, she's gone through quite a few changes over her lifetime, but let's see how we do this game. Hi. So with Scotty, let's go ahead and review our abilities. At level 1, you're going to want to start by putting a point into Scotty's 3. Scotty's 3 is going to summon some ice on the ground, it's a ground caster, and if the enemy walks on it, they're going to lose control and they're just going to slide across the ice. The ice is going to persist on the ground and deal tick damage to enemies that stand or glide over it. Scotty's 1 is going to be a line attack that applies a slow. As you level up the 1, the slow is going to increase. And whenever you hit an enemy with the 1, they're going to take double damage from your 2 or your pet. As you level up the 3, the area of the ice is going to grow and the movement speed you get from walking on the ice is going to increase. At level 2, we're going to put a point into our one and then at level three we're going to put a point into our dog so even though we do not have any points into our dog right now we can still use it to target enemies so whenever we put a point into our two it's going to make it to where the dog can dash and land a basic attack this dash is going to help secure a lot of the damage later on at level three if calder kills a minion he's going to gain a health point so the dog or bear has five health points and regenerates one every five seconds. If an enemy hits the dog, it's going to lose a health point. If an enemy minion hits the dog five times, it's going to lose a health point. We're going to try to help this Kraken out. A little slow on our reactions right there, but that's okay. So at level five, the dog is going to give Scotty 10% increased power whenever nope that's its passive so at rank 5 calder's basic attack is going to give scotty 10 percent increased movement speed and scotty's passive is whenever calder there has zero health runner. points scotty's going to gain 10 percent physical power and then scotty's ultimate is going to make the dog jump onto an area he's going to gain full health full five stacks and then he's going to root enemies and deal damage for a little bit So now that we've gone over the kit, let's go ahead and talk about the build. So Scotty generally, especially before the mid-season patch, I would say fell under an ability-based hunter, meaning that she would do really well off of transcendence and some items that enhance her ability and do some penetration. However, we are going to be going into a newer build, a build that would not really be possible pre-mid-season. So we're going to be going into the Hunter's Blessing, and then we're going to be going into Devourer's Gauntlets. Then we're going to go into Attack Speed Boots, followed by Atalanta's Bow, and then Fail Knot, and then we're going to work on some crit items. So the Hunter's Blessing is going to make it to where we have some bonus attack speed. So that's the combo we're looking for. We want to hit the enemy with the ice, run up to the ice, get the increased movement speed. 
throw our dog onto the enemy, try to hit him with the one so that way they are slowed, they have a dog approaching them, and we have increased movement speed from whenever we start to basic attack. So we're going to pick up this purple, it's going to reduce the enemy's protections by a little bit, and it's going to increase our attack speed ever so slightly. Right now we have enough health and mana that it looks like we're going to be able to stay in lane until we have enough money for our boots. If you were looking kind of low on health or mana, the amount of gold that you're looking for is over 900, so that way you can back and get the tier 2 boots. If you just buy the tier 1 boots, you're not going to get any power from the tier 1 boots, but with the tier 2 boots, you will get a little bit of power, so it should help with your lane clear. Enemy missing left. We had a feeling that they looped around the back way. Your middle tower is under attack. So right here I noticed that the enemy is on our red buff. If we had the foresight maybe 30 seconds ago, we probably could have rotated on these guys and gotten the pick, but instead we were kind of checking to make sure that they got their purple and waiting for Cronus to come around the corner. Potentially could have played that a little bit better. Your middle tower is we under almost attack. have enough for boots. We're going to hit another camp, maybe another wave. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm getting the jungle camp to target me, and then I'm sending my dog onto the jungle camp. That way, both myself and the dog are attacking. So I know the skin's name is Korra. I have no idea what the dog or the bear's name is. So if you guys do know, please leave a comment and help me out a little bit. Never really watched Legends of Korra, but I did finish Avatar The Last Airbender. We're going to get the increased movement speed. We're going to use our line attack. We're going to use our ultimate. We're going to have to back it up just a little bit. Bracken's rotating in. So we do have enough money for our boots. We're going to clear this wave, and then we're going to go ahead and back. So at the beginning of this game, I was not sure if I was going to be going against a Soul or a Kronos. So I did not pick up a Relic. I thought if I go against Soul, I'm going to need the Aegis, if I'm going against Kronos, I'm going to need Beads. So I held off, and it looks like I went against Kronos, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up some Beads. So right here we're going to throw down our Ice, get the increased movement speed, and use that to get to lane a little bit faster. If we take a look at our passive in between our potions and our health bar, we can see that our dog has 5 ticks, meaning that he's at full health. We're going to clear this wave. That's rough, buddy. Enemy so now we have attack speed, Hunter's Blessing, and from attack speed boots. We do not have a lot of power at this point in the game, so we can slain. attack often, but not do a lot. An ally has been slain. It's your time, Naga. We're going to send the dog onto Kronos. Kronos used his ability. We're going to get some basics off while he's basic attacking the dog. He was able to full clear the wave. I'm gonna have to back it up because he still has some minions. Your middle tower is under attack. We're gonna throw the ice down, get him to move up, throw the dog on him, throw the slow, get the increased movement speed from the ice, get some basics off. We do have our ultimate. We use our ultimate. Kronos is, uses his ultimate. We're gonna have to run away. He has a lot of health. We we're able to dodge that ability. He's still coming. We now we know he's on cooldown. He's slid across our ice, now he's in a bad spot. We have our dog on him, we're gonna hit him with the line attack. We're gonna hit him with a basic. Oh boy, can we get him? Hit him with a basic attack, and we get the pick, so now we're gonna peel back. Their soul try to rotate on us, but our team was there to intercept. So now we're gonna be able to just clean up this wave. Oh no, never mind. Here comes Robin. We're gonna have to back it up, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Strafe, strafe, strafe. Trying to get near my minions. Waiting for abilities. I slow him ever so slightly. The slow might have saved me. About to throw the ice. But I get ulted. We tried. We got a pretty good pick onto that Kronos. I think he definitely overchased us. And we were able to bait him just a little bit to get the pick. There was not a whole lot we were going to be able to do against that Ravana. I'm surprised we lasted as long as we did. But we are on the tier 2 of Devourer's Gauntlets. We don't have enough for the full item. 
We are going to want to back and get that item online as soon as possible, so that way we can start stacking it as soon as possible. Devourer's Gauntlet is going to be our form of lifesteal in this build, and we want to get that early. Enemies in the right jungle. You have nowhere to go. Be able to poke right Kronos right with their right ice. So we are playing it pretty careful. We don't want to engage until we have our ice. That's his stun. That's the ability we're trying to dodge. We're going to throw the dog, hit him with the one. Keep basic attacking him. Go ahead and ult him. He ults out. Was a little bit late on my ult right there. I'm going to leave the dog to chase him. Try to get some basics off. I take a lot of damage. I'm going to begin to back it up. Kronos is chasing me. We're gonna throw our ice down, that causes him to skate up just a little bit. We get the increased movement speed, we get the slow. And we're able to get the pick. Callie did rotate over, but I don't know if she got any damage off. So we got the pick, we're gonna go ahead and back and get our Devourer's Gauntlets online. We're gonna buy a mana potion because now we do have a form of health regeneration. If I had some more money, I would have bought a ward. No longer need health point potions at this point in the game. It looks like our purple is up. So we're going to make our way to lane. We're going to go ahead, throw our ice down, clear this lane, and then see what that opens up for us. We're going to move back to our purple, time, pick that up Naga. with Callie. She could have hit this while I was backing on the last back, but she waited, so I do not mind splitting it with her whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the wave, get those stacks going. We see Callie going all in onto this Kronos. She did say gank, she's able to get the pick. We're gonna try to make sure that she can escape. It's not really worth fighting the fast near right here, especially when somebody could just rotate in. So we're gonna fall back and clean up the wave. We missed a few stacks right there, but that's okay. Callie was able to get a pick and we were able to make sure that she was able to escape. We're getting our stacks online. So, Kronos is a magical hunter, meaning that he has access to the lifesteal boots and the cooldown boots, but he does not have access to attack speed boots. So, we should be able to trade basics with him pretty effectively at this point in the game, especially because we have our lifesteal online and only getting stronger. We're going to go ahead and just strip away these Harpy Camps while we wait for the Minion Wave to push up to us. So here is an opportunity for us to be aggressive onto the Kronos. He is a little far back. We are able to get our ice off. We use our beats because we want to be super aggressive, but that probably was not worth it. We either needed the beads sooner or save our beads. The Kronos was going to be able to get away. He just had some good spacing. We're going to go ahead and hit this purple buff. And right now, as carry, we just want to hang out in our lane and farm as much as possible. Once we get Devourer's Gauntlet online, then we can start looking to rotate, but right now our priority and focus is on stacking Devourer's Gauntlet. Someone seems to be struggling. Discordia might need some help. I'm gonna make a rotation mid, see if there's way. anything I can do. We can't leave them behind. She's able to get the pick, so I'm just gonna clean up this wave. She's down for another 20 seconds. She wasn't going to be able to get that wave. We're going to clear this harpy, and then we're going to rotate back left. Well, let's hit the oracles first.
Scotty does have an issue if you're using your dog onto the oracles. The dog will sometimes just go straight for Gold Fury. So just be mindful of that. We get the slow off onto the Fafnir. We're going to have to avoid his ultimate damage. We unfortunately get ticked, but we're going to stick to him. Right now we see Soul. We're going to try to put our dog on a solo. Our dog has no health points. We were able to get the pick onto the Soul. Squirt is able to get a pick. That's three people down on the enemy team. We're going to go ahead and chase in. We do have our ultimate. We're able to get a basic off and get the pick onto the Robin. Now we're going to push the next tower. So Kronos was over in left lane. We had pushed him back to where he felt like he needed to stay in left lane and clean up the minions. So while he was over there, we were able to rotate mid with our team and get the full five man stack going. Pretty early on in the game, 10 minutes in or 14 minutes in, we got the powers and now we're getting the Phoenix. We should be able to peel off and go for fire or gold. I think we can get the full fire giant here. But we're taking too long hitting these camps. The enemy can now rotate in on us. The Scorio is doing a little body blocking. I try to ping like, hey, let's go for the big one. They say no. So now we probably don't have time for the big one. Looks like we might not have ever had time. We're gonna throw our ice down. We're able to secure the Pyromancer. We're gonna loop around. We are kind of low on mana, so we wanna be careful how exposed we leave ourselves here. We're gonna loop back around, see if anybody is rotating this way. We miss our one onto the Fafnir. We're gonna rotate over to this Kraken, see if there's anything we can do. He ends up going down. Now we really don't have any mana, so we're gonna go ahead and back. Now we're going to be getting Atalanta's bow. It's going to give us 25 power, 30% attack speed, and 20% physical penetration. So the physical penetration system got reworked for physical characters. Now you can have up to 40% physical penetration, and you can have some flat pen as well. We're not that concerned with flat pen as Scotty or with most hunters. The only item that hunters would usually buy with flat pen are Aussie and sometimes the Crusher. So we got Atalanta's bow online. It's going to allow us to get our attack speed and deal a little bit more damage to some tanks. We're going to throw our dog onto this Kronos. We're able to get him with a basic. Just overwhelm him with the combo, hit him with the ice, increase movement speed, hit him with the slow. He has to deal with the dog and the basics that are coming his way. So Atalanta's bow is going to make it to where whenever we get a kill or assist, we're going Enemy to get like a wipes. half hasten effect. We're going to be able to move around a little bit faster while basic attacking. And that's going to provide us 20% physical rough, penetration. Buddy. The next item after this is going to be the fail knot. The fail knot right after Atalanta's like bow is like a great bridge item Where into crit. So Fail Knot is going to give you 45 power, a little bit of crit chance, 20% crit chance, and it's also going to give you 20% cooldown, and this 20% cooldown is huge. So that was my first time trying to solo a Gold Fury. After the patch, I was unaware of how much damage he was going to do, and I just completely misjudged that. That was my bad. Probably shouldn't have engaged it, probably should have been with my team. But my team is rotating here, so we should be able to get it now. These stats on Fail Knight are going to help you do damage, it's going to allow you to get your abilities off more frequently, and it's going to give you some crit, so you can then build crit items after Fail Knight. It also has 10% penetration, so between the Atalanta's bow and the Fail Knight, you're going to have 30% physical penetration, and I feel like you don't really need much more than this in most games. Whenever you ult somebody, the next basic attack or ability that you land on an enemy is going to mark them. And then they take, there's a 15% chance that they'll take a critical strike from all sources. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate onto the Suzano. We're going to try to stick to these Fafnir, but he's able to get away. We have just our tanks and myself up here, so we need to back it up. We don't need to be this far up and engaged into the enemy team. We still have some powers that we need to go after. Hi. So our attack speed is pretty good. We are starting to get some damage and power online. 
We're gonna go ahead and back, pick up the red buff. Now we have enough, up oh, almost enough for the fail knot. Come on, guys. There we go. So now we're gonna head towards mid. So after the fail knot, you have your penetration online so you can start going into crit or power. I would recommend going into Rage and then Deathbringer at this point in the build. Or you could go into Deathbringer and Malice. Kind of just depends on how critty you are feeling and which crit items you are favoring. Well, that's going to be it for the end of this game, guys. The stats will be posted in just a second. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel and subscribe for more content. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.